Excellent. Does that make sense, guys? Anybody have any questions about that? Anybody trouble there? Pretty, pretty straightforward again. Once again, yeah? I'm just curious, and this is so off subject, but you only let me video like one time. Did I do a bad job? <laughs> no, well, <laughs> honestly, it's like, that's funny. Um, no, there's only, again. <laughs> that's so funny. Um, I'm trying to think, there's like one person, I don't know who it was, but someone used to always put it on the floor. And it was like that, the worst thing. Like, it wasn't even. It wasn't even. I'm just. I mean, to switch stuff, but I'm just curious. I'm like, no. you never asked me again. I try to. I, my thought process is to try to like mix it up, but okay, then also fair. incorporate like, right. you know, like, I'm just, I'm just I curious. take John. I mean, John, how many times have you held the camera? Yeah, because like you're, oh, you're like, no, you're normally, you're normally like that. So the machine. No. He was showing the camera. He was like, in fact, don't let him hold the camera no more. Kev, in fact, I do remember when you held it, and it, and it was one of the most beautiful shots that I would have given one to do. Some Michael Bay shit. Some Michael Bay shit that was like buildings glorious. exploding. Right. It was too glorious. I didn't want to like, I didn't want to affect the standard. I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, like, you know, you, you ever hear the phrase like, now you're in a new like bracket? There it is. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate it. So we don't want a new videography bracket. All right, guys. So... Let's talk about, um, I want to talk about two things real fast. So number one, it, it, it's this sort of the odds and ends segment. So um, again, this pass is pretty strong. I have a lot, a lot of success with this if they happen to box themselves into this corner. Um, sometimes if you find that they're like holding onto your leg, you might have to finagle a little bit to work your way out of there. Something that is very useful to understand about sit-through passes in general. Okay, whether it be sit through, well, pretty much usually from just half run, right? So sit through, sit through passing is you're if you're kind of stuck between the legs, if their enclassment is something that you have a hard time getting through, um, your your easiest pathway to exit is going to be the to toggle attacking the upper body. This is universally true. So if I'm in say I'm in half guard, say on this leg, and I sit through here. On John, I tie him to the railroad tracks and I sit through, and he's holding on to my leg for dear life and I can't get it free, then I start attacking this Kimura. So what's he going to do? He's going to start defending this Kimura, right? Boom. He's going to, like, it's so hard to maintain the sort of mindfulness to defend the upper body and the lower body at the same time in a sit-through situation. Because the path for me to break free is so direct. It's, my knee goes to the sky, I draw a circle, boom, my foot's cleared, right? So... What I like to do is let me grab you on this leg this time. And if the angle's weird, just let me know. So he has the knee shield, he crunches in, right? I go here and I sit through. Let's say maybe I don't wedge inside deep enough. So he's got a bite on my leg, right? Uh, yeah, you might want to start away. So maybe I don't feel like I can get through tight enough. Is the guillotine attack right here is actually not bad. I've tapped a few people with this. Is you just start working for your guillotine choke. Just Right here. I mean, it doesn't seem like much, but if you guys, John, it's like once I start yoking this thing up, I have pretty good leverage. So he starts fighting the hands, right, defending the choke. Boom, he's going to So just sort of something to add in there as a little extra weapon. Um, especially, like, I prefer, I find myself more often elbow to the floor, framing the back, but if you weave that arm under like a guillotine, kind of almost like you're doing a cradle. You can almost think of this like a cradle with a back step. Um, so let me do that. From, let me think of an angle I want to see. Let's do on this leg here. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good one. So he's here, right? And so let's say, actually, let's rotate this way for a moment. So I could, instead of here, which I think is positionally stronger because I can frame my elbow against his head, I could just weave here. Then I sit through. And if it doesn't, if the pass doesn't fire, I'll say, I'll say that leg's on top, right? But he doesn't quite. Uh, breaking, you know what I mean? I, I can't get out of this for whatever reason. I can start threatening the choke, and I'll, I'll show you guys the pressure in a second. But I just grab the blade of my hand, and I just start lift, uh, serving my forearm to his neck, like I'm, I'm holding a microphone to him, and I arc my back. Yeah, and yes, John, that gets on tight pretty quick. So I start doing that. He starts defending. Same passing mechanism. So all that grip is, guys, visible opponent, is I get it. Like I get the choke exposure. Remember too, um, for those of you that have not been here for, or not heard me say this, your, guillot your best tool for your guillotine is your, your Fonzie thumbs up. Hey, they're tucking their chin really tight. You take your thumb and you weave that in. Hey. Right? 
So I'm here, I weave my thumb in, I get my grip, and then I want to like serve, I want to turn my wrist towards him and kind of serve, like, as if I'm holding a mic, like, how did you like that shit, right? Like, holding a microphone to him, and then arch and lift. Like, I'm giving, I'm serving him the microphone. He'll bring the hands up to defend. If he defends successfully, I'm out. If he doesn't, choke the motherfucker. Pretty simple, right? Yes, Done. Right? Um, and then the last thing I want to point out is I just want to reiterate the sort of um, connective nature of these passes, right? The leg rope will be the one you hit the most. If you work on this pass, I am telling you right now, anyone who's worked on this pass that I've shown them, like, this, that leg rope is super duper, duper, duper reliable. Like, crazy reliable. Occasionally, they will get that collar grip in advance. So I'm simply throwing that collar grip at them, like throwing that grip break at them, and they're going to make a choice. Let me get you back. Let's say I get you on this leg. If he gets that collar grip on me, right, okay, even if all that happens is as I go here, right, you know, he just kind of goes back to neutral or whatever. It's like I might just go back and get in, right? I can always toggle between any of these. If he creates the very condition, you know, like let's say I get here and then his approach is to bring that top knee back up and frame me out, right? Bring him back in. You see what I'm saying? And at that point, if my head's already there and he wrestles for that collar grip, it's not really going to mean a lot. Like I'll be okay at this point. It's only if he actually gets it stiff arm where me trying to enter could get this elbow in position to choke me. Does that make sense, guys? It's like that distinction? Meaning, if he gets it first, I don't want to try to barrel forward with my leg rope. If I have my head in position and he gets it second, it's usually going to be a shady grip. You don't have to respect that too much. Theoretically, you should always respect collar grips, but... When we go into the, like, how to deal with, like, um, how to deal with loop chokes and stuff class, you'll kind of see where I'm coming from on that, so... Um, and again, if I'm here, I'm here. Let's say I go up and I get, like, I hit this wall and he's, like, pushing away at me and all this. I feel like I could go back. But if he springs that, if he crunches it on me, right, I'm ready. Even if he gets this underhook, now I tie him to the railroad tracks, I start working my Camaro series. So the point I want to make is one of the things that I want to lean into now that we've laid out the series is for the rest of the month, I really want to focus on drilling all of these passes connecting to each other because it's really like a triangle rather than a line. It just happens to be that if he crunches in, um, that's gonna, I would say like, it's kind of like the leg rope pass you will hit most on most people, but when they give you that final sit through pass, that will succeed without problem more often than any of the other ones. Does that make sense? Like the leg rope pass might get stifled, you might have to work for it, this, that, and the third, they might mess with your grips. If they box themselves into the corner, of that third one, it's very unlikely that they'll defend that. Like I feel like that one, uh, they just don't go there as often, right? Does that make does that kind of distinction make sense, guys? So let's play around with again that guillotine. Do you want to see that? Like, oh no, just kind of weave under, you know. So instead of elbow against the head and, and palm against the back, just slide the hand in like a guillotine, or start with the elbow against the back hand, or elbow against the head, hand against the back, and then weave in. Play around with what feels comfortable, and then I want you guys to play around with transitioning between these passes a little bit. Just getting a sense of like maybe maybe the bottom person gives a mild degree of defense and nothing substantial, but just something that you could sort of feel, and then feel like okay, well I guess I could just drop to my leg row from here, or I guess I could you know oh they're kind of crunching in, maybe I can do my back step. And as we go further down, showing some of the less um, internal passes within the system, some of the other options we have, you'll start to see like where those openings are. So anyway, I will stop rambling. Let's partner up. Let's work it out. One, two, three.